Hey, Russell Leeds here. Welcome to Winners on a Wednesday. This week, I am joined by David Marshall. Great to have you on the show, David. All right, Russell. Uh, yeah, there we go. We'll shake hands. I saw you, I saw you start to move there. I thought, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, David, as you, I've known you for how, how long have I known you now? For about, about a year? Probably just, just over a year. year. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. And um, so, let's start from the, from the beginning. So, before. Uh, before you came on our academy and came to the crash course and everything, you worked for BT. I did, yes. Yep. Yeah. And how, tell us a bit about that. Um, well, yeah, BT was a good job for me. I enjoyed working for BT. I didn't hate it. I I actually worked for BT for just under thirty one years. So, um, but yeah, it's been comfortable, paid the bills, and I was I thought I was fairly. Um, well paid for the job I did. So. so you were fairly well paid. Yeah. Fairly happy. I was. I was content. I was. You know. I didn't really hanker for getting another job or. or I hate this job. I, mm. I. I liked working with BT, so I enjoyed it. So, what made you think property? What What made What What stirred it up in you to get into property? What stirred it? Okay. Basically, I mean. I mean the term, I was an accidental landlord, so I did actually buy my first house quite a long time ago. I bought it like around 23, 25 years ago. Okay. But um, after a couple of years, I couldn't actually afford to stay in there. So I, you know, I had sense enough not to sell it. So, but I wanted to keep it well, so I just rented it out. Yeah. But, um, and did you buy another one or did you just rent where you lived? No, I just I just rented that house and I think I moved back. I must have moved back in with my family. Or, okay. Uh, I, I did that, but I just rented the, this house um, and I just got an income from it. I, in the thoughts was I, I wish I had money to buy another one because that was the only thinking. If I had money, I, I was sure I would buy another house, I think. But I didn't and I didn't really tried to find out how to do it so i just stayed with the one house so you had one so although you were a landlord in many ways you were in the same position as most people yeah, you yeah. own one house you were yeah. slowly paying off the mortgage yeah, yeah. you're working at a job that you reasonably enjoyed that you were I reasonably did. well paid for yeah, yeah and then beginning of 2018 suddenly you were like right bang got the property bug and you wanted to you wanted to sort of start taking this seriously okay yeah i mean there was a so I got introduced and someone someone kind of showed me and highlighted me what people were actually doing with property and how they could get multiple properties. Mm. And I thought, I could give this a go and just see what I could do. Yeah. And, I, and, and that's really been my attitude towards it, really. It's just, let's give it a good go, let's see what I can do. So when you started, how did you how did you feel? Were you were you excited? Were you scared? Were, were, what were you, what were you feeling at that time when you st suddenly made a, a decision you you were going to really get into it? I don't think I was I don't think I was um, scared or anything. <laughs> was I excited? I I don't really know if I, I would have called it excited, but I just I thought this is going this is going to be a good thing. If it works, and I, you know, I should be able, I should be coming time like welfare. And the thoughts of being scared about it, I, I don't think that crossed my mind. I'd already bought the house, so I'd have gone through the process. So I don't think there's any great apprehension. Um, so I thought, yeah, just give it a go. You just thought it was a positive yeah. thing. Let's just yeah, go for it. Let's go for it and see what happens. Yeah. Brilliant. So you came on the crash course early 2018. Yeah. Did you feel inspired? I, I did, and I thought what <laughs> Sam kept saying, oh, this stuff is easy, and, and I believed it, Yeah, uh, actually. And, you know, because it's not like a, a degree, you spend four years to learn something, you can do this and be financially free in six months or a year. You know, so you don't need to study for a whole four years mm. to get an income or, you know, to get great results. You know, quite frankly, I mean... Actually, joining the crash course, I, I already had through other means. I already had like five deals on the go, so I was fairly confident that I would be in a couple of months. I'll be financially free. Yeah. If these deals like come through, I'll be financially free. So I'll be, and then what I'm learning, of course, I'll be, you know, I'll be, you know, give me much. I Even better. Yeah. So, 
So you've got five deals that are all going through? Yeah, I had five deals all going through. What, what, what happened to those? It happened to them, um, but all, but f at least four of them fell through. So all, like, I had five deals and four of them fell through. And I think one, the other fifth one, I, I just gave up because it was just taking too long to complete. I just, I just done it. So basically, I, I lost all five deals and that was in, that was in like, um, I had deals probably in, started probably in January, February. Yeah. So just before starting the course, I, I had them, but they all fell through, so. How, how did you feel? Because obviously you'd just been on the crash course, you thought this is easy, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna become financially free. To have all the deals, for whatever reason, fall out of bed and, and, and you're left with nothing, <laughs> how did that make you feel? Well, I was very disappointed and frustrated, yeah. you know what I mean? And, um, but what was kind of like evident, um, or when seeing people, and hearing Samuel and I don't think you yourself might have said it, but you just have to stay consistent and persistent in things and just keep doing things over and over because you just don't know when you the the results will start coming in. You don't you know, it's just like buses sometimes none comes none comes in and then all of a sudden you get two or three in a row. Mm -hmm. And you just stay consistent, stay doing the right things and I thought I just stay, this stuff works. I just stay, keep doing it, and eventually I'll, I'll get my deal. So you had faith that it would come good? Yeah, I, I firmly believe, I, I had a property as well, so I knew it was, a, it was a good thing to do, so just stay, you know, consistent doing it. Mm. I, I can remember, because obviously you, you joined our academy, and I remember, I remember I meeting you at the courses, and at first you were telling me about the five deals, and then I was like, oh, you know, oh, one of them's fallen out of bed, or two, and then it was like, you were like, I don't have any deals right now. And I was, I felt really bad for you, because um, you're one of those people who you clearly are consistently good at putting, putting your all into it. Yeah. And I was like, I really hope he doesn't get disheartened, because he's come to the events, he's doing all the right things. I remember talking to you and you're like, I'm doing the calls, I'm, doing, I'm sending out lease option agreement letters. Yeah, yeah. You were doing everything you were supposed to be doing. Yeah. And it felt like everything was going wrong for you and all the deals were falling out of bed. And I just thought, I really hope that he is strong enough yeah. to, to keep going with this because you know, I think a lot of people at that point would just go, oh, this doesn't yeah. work. Oh, yeah. this is stupid. Oh, don't invest in property oh mm. they say it's easy yeah. but it's not mm. oh but and all this stuff going on yeah yeah um so i think you did really well i'm really like proud of you there for like sticking yeah. through that because i think that shows a lot of character yeah thank you um thank you Russell. um there was one actually one point and um it's one of those in the coaching calls with rex about i don't know about six months ago yeah and he described the hockey stick curve and um you pay all this money you know, going on courses and um, whatever they're doing, setting all your properties, you're paying all the money and it's just, all this money's going out, going out, going out. Then maybe you might reach the bottom and then finally you might get a rental property. So you got earning, start earning, but you haven't quite crossed the break even point. Mm. So, and I thought, oh, that's what, that's what it is. That's what I'm going through. Yeah. And I just realised it is. It's just the case of time. People just have to stay in the game mm. and stay long enough. That time period, that that hockey stick, that that time where you know you're paying all this money. If you can stay in the game long enough, it's gonna shoot up mm -hmm. and it will shoot up like high. You just get get yourself to that point. Yeah. And well, you, you had three things. First of all, you educated yourself. Yeah. So you knew what you were doing. That's right. Then you consistently were doing the right things. Yeah, yeah. And thirdly, you had a, a faith and a belief yeah. that, it, that it would come good. And I think yeah. if anyone does that, if anyone, you know, there'd be a lot of people probably watching this video that have, have, have tried, whether yeah. it be property investing, whether it yeah. be setting up their own business, yeah. whatever it is, and they'll have come across hurdles and other stuff. Yeah. So uh, for me, you, are a great example for anyone like that, that you just carry on doing the right things, plugging away, and yeah. eventually it becomes yeah. good. So tell me about your, your first deal that you got. The first deal was, uh, 
actually in um, probably August, and it, it was a relationship that I'd built up, uh, built up a good relationship, and they offered me like a, a lease option deal. So, so yeah, the Holy Grail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, lease option deal. So I took that. I, I, maybe I started. I did a bit. Had a bit of a refo. It wasn't quite the way I wanted it. So yeah, that was my first one, and then. Two weeks later, they offered me another one. Wow, so, it's yeah. funny, isn't it? Often, like you say about buses, but yeah. once you get what yeah. first deal is always the hardest. <laughs> yeah. How did you? How, how were, you, were you buzzing when the first deal? <laughs> yeah, came when through? I got my first one, uh, I'm, unbelievable. So yes. Yeah. I'm on my way now. So yeah, and I just know, you know, that Richard brands a thing as well. Just you know, people offer me opportunities, I just take them and say yeah. Yeah. And just go go with it. Yeah. And then soon a load more deals followed. So like, you know, six months after that, and you're now officially financially free. Yeah. You were just telling, he just said to me, he's like, I'm not sure if I'm financially free. I'm earning 31,000 pound passive income a year, but my expense, you know, and I'm like, dude, you've quit your job. When did you quit your job? I quit my job in um, November 18. In November, so you've been there 31 years. You've been yeah. in this, it, it feels like a long time when, it, when it's going on, yeah. but realistically, it's eight, eight months really. Yeah. yeah. Since, and, and, you, and before you got your first deal, yeah. which in the grand scheme of things, yeah, it's nothing, it, is it? It's nothing. You know, people for, you know, there were a year long, maybe a year long mentorship and, you know, you know, so, you know, it, it happens. Yeah. And you hear that story, you just, you know, believe in it, have faith in what people are saying. You know, more experienced than you, so they're wherever you just stay in the game. Yeah. This stuff works, so you just stay in it, keep doing it, you'll get the results. Yeah. And yeah, I firmly believe that. I know that, and the results are coming to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got £31,000 passive income coming in now. Yeah. Tell us about some of the deals that you've got coming up, because I, I know you're not resting on your laurels and just thinking, ah, oh, no. I've got 31 grand, that's more than the average wage, I can just sit back. You're still ploughing on with other stuff. So what have yeah. you got going through at the moment? Um, so. I'm hoping to complete um, by the end of next week a 10 bed. Um, same time. 10 bed HMO? Yeah, 10 bed HMO. And, it's quite uh, a large one. Yeah, okay. it was an opportunity someone offered me and I didn't say no to it. Wow. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Start with mid, mid size HMOs, do them, and then someone offers you another one. Well, you've got the experience now with the smaller yeah. ones, haven't you? Yeah, so that, so that, that makes sense. So that was that. And that's then pretty cool. Where's that? That's in Bradford, actually. That was, I was listening to Samuel's um, YouTube yeah. ages ago. And he said one of the areas he was going to go to was up there. So I just followed him up there and just went, found a pop too. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, you, you've, uh, you very much keep yourself in the game, don't you? Yeah. I, I do that. Uh, I know my activity is high, mm. so you know I do I do a lot. And you know what? Even while I was working in BT, it was, I was still doing one of the reasons. I was still doing a lot of activity, and that was the reason why you know I decided to leave because I'm getting all this um, results, and I'm still working in BT. Mm. Why am I still working? Why do I need to still be working? I could be much more effective um, if I can do this full time. Yeah. So it, it was, it was no brainer to me, so much more effective, you know. So when you were working at BT, how many hours a week were you spending on your property business? Um, oh, any free free time, any free, because I was at IT sport, that's our role, so any free time, um, any free time I would do something, make phone calls, lunch breaks, any free time I had, I make for um, minimum probably I would be doing um, maybe you know I could probably do at least um, working at home. I probably could do around at least half an hour a day easily. Yeah, I would eat that. Some days I won't be able to get more out of a day. Um, and we working on the weekends as well. No, I just worked Monday to Friday, okay. so it was like on the weekends was when I do viewing. Yeah. So uh, I do viewing, so my viewings were probably every, not every weekend, but probably, I would probably aim to do viewings probably maybe two or three out of, out of four. So, so you weren't, it wasn't like a massive amount of time? No. Seven hours a week? 
Yeah, probably. Probably something like that. Yeah, yeah. So you so you built that up slowly. How, how, do you spend a lot more time on it now, or no? Because because uh, you're financially free now, and you're not like, well, just living it up. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I've made a point, and I, out of all this, I know the money will come to you, yeah. come to you, but it's just the time I want really. It's, yeah, and just to be able to live the way I want to. So when I left um, BT, I didn't want to go do property and do viewings five days a week or seven days a week. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to turn it into another job. Yeah. So I just, I kind of want um, the time and freedom to obviously to build up, to meet people, meet coffees. So I'll probably have around two days where I might go and view, do viewings. The other two days were probably, I might um, leave kind of free to meet up with people. Um, also, I've got enough time now to do courses when I want to. Mm. I don't have to, oh, I haven't got enough leave. I, so I can do a course. If, if I want to do a course, I can just do it. Yeah. So, and you know, so I, I space up my day, um, particularly for that reason. I don't want to make it a full-time job. Yeah. So I think yeah. a lot of people would find that sort of lifestyle very attractive. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. So is that why you, I mean, what's, what was the driving factor? Because obviously you, it, the easy thing to do would have been just to stay at BT. You've been there for years, yeah. you're used to it. And I was going to do that. <laughs> so so what, was the, what was the most, I mean, you're now financially free, which is amazing. High five for that, by the way. Okay. What, was the, what was the motivation to become financially free? What was your, what I was think, your... Um, I've got two young children, 16 and 15, and I just want to make sure, um, I don't want them to live, uh, to spend working 40 hours a week for 40 years mm. in the job. I just want to show them there is another way to live yeah. and educate yourself, see the world, um, you know, and help others if you can do. And you can do that through, you know, if you choose to do it through property and, and another form, the passive income, you can do it for that way. You don't have to be working like 40 hours a week to do that. So it's as much as anything to yeah. be an inspiration to your kids. Yeah, so show them there was a different way to live and yeah, just be, you know, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's awesome. That's okay. awesome. And you're going to be an inspiration to lots of people watching this as well. <laughs> well so yeah, you, you're doing hope, well there. I hope so. so yeah. <laughs> so um, what's the, what's the plans for you now? Then you're just going to what's the what's your plans for the future? Complete on these deals. Yeah. And um, I think um, I'll just keep on doing. I mean, I don't want to get. Well, I don't say I don't want to, but I can't say I won't get into developments mm -hmm. because. Someone, if someone offered me an opportunity, I'll probably say yes to it. Yeah. And um, yeah, obviously, I'll, I'll see if I can do it, if, if I've got the abilities to do it. But I don't think a development would necessarily scare me off it. Mm. And I would seek to get the guidance and seek to find out from people what do I need to do, what do I need to look at. But I'll probably say yes to it. Mm. Uh, and just go with it, but yeah, there's no plan. Uh, there's there's no plan for me to get a ten bed HMI, yeah. but it just came up. Mm. So there's no plan for me to get big developments, but it might come up. I'll, I'll so what would you say then, looking back at the last? It's not even been that long, has it? Twenty eighteen, last year and a few months or a year and a half or whatever. What would you say if you just look at that? Is the biggest lesson that you've learned? Okay, I mean, obviously, I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks and uh, Napoleon Hill, I think, go rich and um, the Slight Edge, mm. doing little things that are daily, mm. um, that compound effect, just daily building up. And when you turn around and look after six months, you've done, you've done a hell of a lot. It's just like uh, last year, looking back, what I did, I just, I wouldn't have believed I would have done it, but. I was doing a point at work, I was doing something every day. I was doing something every day in property. And whether it's going out of viewings, whether it's phone, solicitor, contact, keep in touch with my builders, or I was doing something every day. Yeah. And, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, phone calls, you know, 
I was, I was just at it all the time. So just daily activity, yeah. keep yeah. doing it yeah. every day, even if yeah. it's only small, yeah. like you say, slight edge yeah. uh, and compound effect. Yeah. Darren Hardy compound effect, isn't it, I believe? Or is that I think he, he has written it. It's one by Jeff Olson. Jeff Olson, and Darren Hardy, they yeah. are great books. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've read both of them. Yeah. Uh, just keep doing daily activity and yeah. be on the lookout for opportunities. That's right, yeah. And don't... Opportunities are everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. and you've obviously taken them with with both hands yeah yeah absolute pleasure getting to know you over the last 18 months I'm, I, I, I'm really proud as well, well what you've achieved getting to know you through that and all and uh, being a bit of part of that but look Cheers. you've been awesome man thank take you. care Cheers. good luck thank you my name is Samuel Leeds. Thank you for watching Winners on a Wednesday. Every single week, we interview our success students for your inspiration. You can watch more right here on the playlist. There's a whole playlist of them. But what you'll notice is every single winner on a Wednesday, it always starts with them coming to my two-day crash course. So if you would like to be a winner on a Wednesday, literally come on my crash course, and who knows, in three months' time, you could be here in my offices on this show as a winner on a Wednesday. So get yourself booked on the crash course, watch more, have fun, I'll see you next week.